Hello there and welcome back to my channel. I have a super exciting video for you all today. I don't know about you, but this year is going to be very different and there's a lot of uncertainty. And because of that, it is more important than ever to have all of the important information that families could possibly need in one place because we need to make everyone's lives easier right now. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to create a class or grade level website for free using Google Sites. First of all, if it seems like I have more energy than normal, it's because I've had like two cups of coffee this morning. But I'm also just very excited for this video. I have had a grade level website for the past several years and I've been using Shutterfly. I know you're probably thinking Shutterfly is just for pictures, but you can actually create websites on Shutterfly and it's great, but it's not very customizable. Recently, my principal actually sent me an email and she asked team leads to create a Google site for the grade level and I was like, yes, because I've been waiting for this moment for years. I love Google Sites so much. First of all, they're free. Second of all, they are so customizable so you're able to have them look cute but also still be super functional. And as most of you know, for the entire month of August, I am doing one thing every single day to prepare for my classroom slash teaching. I'm using air quotes because it's all gonna be virtual, but you get the point. So one of the things I have been doing is actually creating a Google site for my grade level. In today's video, I'm gonna walk you through from start to finish how to create a Google site. I'm gonna show you a lot of the tips and tricks that I have learned in order to really customize it and have it work for you. And if you see me looking over here, it's because that's where my laptop is, <laughs> all right? And I'm literally just going to do this step by step. Let's start by talking about how to create a Google site. There are a few different ways. I right now am in Google Drive and from Google Drive, you can click on new, come down to more, and then select Google Sites. You also can type directly in the address bar sites.new and it will automatically open up a new Google site for you. You will notice when your Google site opens up, you need to give it a name. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna call it FES for fake elementary school. And let's do fourth grade. I'm gonna show you how to make like a grade level website. Now, once I type that in, it's gonna automatically put it up in the corner of my site, but I don't really like that. So you can actually delete it from here. Your title will still stay on the actual site. It just won't be on the site. Hopefully that made sense. <laughs> Now, the next thing I do is change the theme. So I'm gonna come over to themes and there are a few different themes you can choose from. I really like the one at the bottom, Impression. It has like the chunky Oswald font in all capitals. I just really like it. You can customize the color. Personally, I want it to be solid black. So I'm gonna come to the paint bucket and I'm gonna type in the hex code, which is 000000, 000, 000, 000, 000 and that's gonna change it to black. And if I want to, I can also change the font style, but I actually really like the capital. So I'm gonna leave that. Now let's start by talking about our header. Now, you actually have a few different header types you can choose from. You can have a cover where it's actually gonna cover the entire screen when you first open up. You can have a large banner, a regular banner, or title only. I personally really like just the regular banner. You can also customize this by adding your own images. So Google Sites does have images you can choose from. If you come to select image, they have a gallery that you can choose from. But you know, we all love to customize things, or at least I do. So I'm going to show you how to actually customize this header. Now you can use this title right here. The great thing is, so let's type in FES fourth grade. This is going to automatically resize for different devices. So if you come up to the preview button, it looks like a laptop with a smartphone up at the top. This will show you what your website will look like on different devices. So it will show you on like a large screen, like a laptop or a computer, a tablet or a phone. And you'll notice that title is automatically resizing, which is great, but I will say with this, you can't customize it too much. You know, you can't change all the colors and whatnot. So I'm gonna show you how to fully customize it, but keep in mind when you fully customize it and insert it as an image, the resizing isn't going to work perfectly. So if it matters to you, stick with this title. If it doesn't matter, you can do what I'm about to show you. I'm gonna go ahead and just delete that full title. So I just have an image at the top and I'm going to open up Microsoft PowerPoint with just a blank presentation. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and exit out of the design ideas. I'm going to delete the second text box. I'm going to start with just one. Typically I would resize the slide, but I'm not going to in this case because instead I'm just going to be using this slide in order to create other images. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So actually I'm going to delete this top text box too. I changed my mind. I'm going to come up to the shape tool and I'm going to create a rectangle. I'm going to have it be the full length of the slide and yeah, height wise, I think that's okay. Maybe make it a little bit thicker. I'm gonna make it have no fill and no outline. Go with me on this, okay? Now I'm going to right click and choose edit text. I'm going to actually use this to be my text box. The reason I'm using a table instead of just a text box is because I wanna keep it nice and wide so my text doesn't get cut off, okay? Just trust me. So let's type fourth grade and it's in all white, so we're gonna change that to black so I can see it. Let's try that again, fourth grade. I'm doing all capitals. I'm gonna choose that same Oswald font so that it will match the other fonts on my website. I'm going to use, actually, instead of regular, let's make this one bold, nice and chunky, and we're gonna make it big. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Maybe go a little bit smaller, okay. And then underneath, we're gonna type fake elementary school very creative. Let's change this one instead of that bold font. Let's just do regular and let's make this smaller so that it's smaller than the word fourth grade. All right. I think that's pretty good. We're going to come up here and we're going to actually change the color of each different letter just to, you know, make it fun. I'm going to come to shape format, text fill, choose more colors, and I'm going to just go in rainbow order. So we're going to do strawberry. And that means this G also needs to be that pink color. And then we're gonna choose tangerine. These are like my favorite colors in PowerPoint for a rainbow. We're gonna make the R the same color. We're gonna make the U lemon. Okay, same thing for the A. And then we're gonna do the R in the color lime. So more fill colors, lime. Same thing with the D. And then we're gonna make this T aqua. The great thing is, as I'm selecting these colors, it's gonna save it under my kind of recently used. So as I continue to make things for my Google site, the colors will already be there. And then finally, grape. Okay, so now I have these rainbow colors, but I want to add a black outline because I think the A and the U are kind of hard to see. So I'm gonna come up here to outline and choose black. And let's make it a little bit thicker, like three times. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. I now want to save this as its own image. So I'm going to select that uh, shape, right click and choose save as image. So in my downloads, I'm gonna just title this header and click save. Now I'm gonna come back to my Google site. I'm going to go to change image and choose upload. And my header is right there. I'm gonna click open. Beautiful. Oh, I love it. Okay. Now you'll notice it's adjusting for readability because I have the background just as plain. It doesn't need to adjust it, but if it might be hard for you to read the title on top of this, it will put kind of a gray overcast or a different color overcast. You can always click this though to remove it if you don't want that. So it's looking pretty good. Just to show you what I meant by it's not going to automatically resize, if I look at it on a mobile device or a tablet, it's cut off just a little bit. So it depends on your audience and whether most of your parents or students are going to be viewing it on a computer or a tablet. So make it work for whatever you need. Okay. Personally, I really like to keep my homepage pretty simple. I don't want to clog up my homepage with too much stuff. I really like to add over here with the layouts, this kind of three column layout. So this will allow me to add in images and it will keep them in those three columns. So what we're going to do is we're going to create some little kind of buttons, if you will. I'm going to come back to PowerPoint and I'm going to go ahead and make a new blank slide. So I want to add in some circles. Now I go to the circle tool. I'm pulling down shift as I'm clicking and dragging. It's going to keep it in a perfect circle instead of an oval. Let's make this like two inches. Yeah. Okay. I think that's fine. <laughs> now I'm going to have six different pieces. So I'm going to use rainbow color order again. I'm going to go ahead and fill this with the pink color, 
but have it have no outline. And I want to add an image on top. So I'm going to have this first icon be for like meet your teachers. So I want to add in an Apple icon. So I'm going to come to picture, picture from file. I've already saved these to my computer, but these are basically called icons. So what you can do is just go to Google and type in like Apple icon and find the image that you want to use. So I have this Apple, let's make it 1.7 and then kind of center it in. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Underneath, I'm gonna add a text box. So I wanna make sure I resize the text box so it's the exact same size, okay? I'm gonna to come to that Oswald font again and I'm gonna use bold on top. So actually, no, I'm gonna use bold on the bottom. So let's go back to regular. So it's gonna say meet your, and then teachers, but I'm gonna change teachers into the bold font, okay? And I'm going to center this and make it a little bit bigger. Okay, that looks pretty good. I can now click and drag to select all of these and I'm going to just copy and paste it so I can make my next one. So for this next one, I'm gonna change the circle color to the orange. And I'm gonna have this next one be our schedule. So view our schedule. Okay, and I wanna replace this apple with like a calendar icon so I can actually right click on it, change picture from a file, and I can choose calendar and it's gonna automatically pop it in. All right, we're gonna make that a little bit smaller. So let's come down and size, center it again. Okay, that looks good. So again, I'm gonna copy and paste this one because I think the apple was kind of the oddball out in terms of the size. So next I'm gonna have e-learning expectations. Ooh, okay, our font's getting a little big, so I'm gonna make it smaller. Let's see, can we try 22? Nope, too big, 21. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and resize these other ones to be the same size. Let's go ahead and change the color to be yellow. And for e-learning, I'm gonna use like a laptop, so I'm gonna change this to a laptop image. That looks pretty good. Next, let's go ahead and paste again. And this one we're gonna make green. And this one might be, oh, I didn't change the font on this. Okay, let's go to 21. This is going to be online resources. Okay, so let's change this image to the idea icon. Okay, all right, let's copy and paste this one. Okay, let's go ahead and change this to blue and let's have this be e-learning help because we all need that right now. And let's change this to like the question one, okay. And last one, I'm gonna drag it down here and it doesn't matter if they're perfectly lined up because I'm gonna be saving them each individually. This one is going to be contact information. And let's change the image to the mail icon. All right, those are looking pretty good. Just like before, I'm gonna save each one as an image. But what's different is here I have multiple pieces, whereas the first time it was just one image or one like box. So I'm going to click and drag to select all of the pieces. I'm going to right click, choose save as picture. And for the sake of this, I'm just gonna call it like homepage one. Safe. All right, so now I'm just repeating that same process. So clicking and dragging to select all of them. Save as picture. Let's make this one homepage two. Save as picture, homepage three. Okay, now I have them all saved. I'm gonna come back to my Google site and where this plus sign is, that's going to allow me to insert an image. So I'm going to choose upload and I'm gonna choose each one of them. So let's start with the apple. All right, see how it's cut off right now? I don't want that. So I'm gonna come to uncrop and it's gonna insert the whole thing. I don't need these text boxes underneath. So I'm going to click on it and choose delete. Click on it, choose delete. So now I'm just repeating that process. Now I could type the text in that text box. The reason I kept it as one image is because I'm going to link each of these and I don't wanna to have to link an image and a text box. I'd rather just link it as one. So I'm gonna go ahead and upload this third one. And then I'm gonna show you how to kind of duplicate this section so it's easier. 
going to delete the text box and delete the text box. So now that I have this section and it's pretty much what I want, I'm gonna go ahead and click the duplicate section button. It looks like two pieces of paper. Now, when I click on this, I can choose the three little dots, go to replace image, upload, and I can choose the next one and it's already uncropped and I don't have to delete the text boxes. So it is saving me time. Upload this one. Okay, upload. Ah. And the last one. Oh, it is looking so good. All right, let me go ahead and preview this on a large screen. It is looking good. Okay, let's X out of that. <laughs> Now I need to start creating the pages that I want these to link to. So if I come over here to pages, right now I have just a home page, which is this, but I wanna create a page for the teachers. So I'm going to go to new page, type in teachers, click done, and you will notice that it has now created a new page. So I can click back over to home, here's my home page, and here's my teachers page. Now I'm gonna come back to this in a second. But for now, that's looking pretty good. I actually want to add a page for each teacher. So I'm going to click on the three dots. I'm going to click add sub page. So let's say we have Miss Foray done. And then we also have, let me click on the three dots on teachers again, add sub page, Mr. Emerson, that's Billy, <laughs> going to click done. So now when I go to my home page and I come to teachers, I now have a drop down so they can actually select which teacher they want. Now what I want is for this image right here, meet your teachers, to link to that page. So I'm gonna select this image, come to the link button, and I want it to just go to the main teachers part. So I'm gonna click apply. And now if I go to preview, and I can either come up here to teachers and select there, or I can click on the apple and it's gonna take me to that teacher page. So let's go ahead to the teacher page, which is where I am now. Just like before, I wanna create that kind of custom header. So I'm gonna delete the actual title that's there. Let's go to PowerPoint. And I'm going to select the same box that I had before, copy and paste it. But now we're gonna select fourth grade. We're gonna just rename this to say teachers. I'm going to right click save as picture and we're going to call this header two all right so i'm going to come back to my google site change image upload and i'm going to select that second header so now it says fourth grade teachers it's looking better now i want to add kind of like two images to show each of us so i'm going to select this double one and let's go ahead and insert an image so i'm going to upload and we're gonna do me first, and we're going to uncrop, okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and type Miss Foray, and I'm, I'm not gonna use the little subtitle, we're gonna take that off. And then here I'm gonna insert a picture of Billy, which I do not have a lot of pictures of Billy, he tends to not want his picture taken, so we're gonna use one from the Grand Canyon. <laughs> let's go ahead and uncrop, uh, all right, let's make this, can we make it smaller so it, yeah, so I'm just resizing it so it ends up being the same height as my picture. Okay, looks good, Mr. Emerson, awesome. Now I want them to be able to click on these pictures and have it go to the sub page. So I'm gonna select my picture and I'm gonna come to link and I'm gonna have it linked to Miss Foray. Click apply, I'm gonna choose Billy's image, I'm gonna click it twice to get those options to come up. Insert link, Mr. Emerson, apply, okay. So now let's come to pages. Let's go ahead to my page. Again, I don't want this title, so I'm gonna delete it. Maybe I'm gonna come into PowerPoint and let's go ahead and make a new slide. And let's copy this over, paste it. So I'm gonna just retype this. And then maybe I'm teaching math and science. So I'm gonna type math and science teacher. I'm gonna go ahead and save this as header three. And once again, I can change the image, upload, choose that new header. It's going to upload it. And then I can customize this page however I want. So again, I can insert, maybe I want something like this where I can add in that picture of me. Again, I'm going to uncrop. I can add text like hello there, since that's what I always start by saying. This is my 
seventh year of teaching at fake elementary school. So you get it, I can add all of that and customize it here. I can have it be more of like that heading font, which would put it in the all caps. I don't think I want that though. I can have it be subheading, which just makes it a little bit bigger. Okay, you get the point. Now let's go back to the homepage and let's just kind of test this. So I'm gonna go to preview. All right, I'm on my homepage. I click meet your teachers. Cool, it takes me to this page. Let's say I wanna meet me, click on it. Awesome, it takes me to my page. Looking good so far. <laughs> so next, let's come back to the homepage. I have my teacher's page. Maybe I want a schedule page. So I'm gonna come to pages. I'm gonna select home, add a page, schedule, done. I can reorder this, so maybe I want it to be after teachers. I can drag it down to the bottom, and now it's underneath at the end. Let's go ahead back to home. So now I have teachers and I have schedule. I want this icon to link to that schedule page. So I'm going to select that and click apply. And then once I'm on my schedule page, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this and I'm not gonna worry about making a title. I've shown you how to do that. I do wanna show you how to add in some different pieces besides just the images and text. So I'm gonna come to insert and I'm gonna use this collapsible text. So this is really, really cool. I've seen this on a lot of websites. Basically, it's gonna show some text and then you can click on it and it's gonna show more text. So I'm just gonna make up a big schedule. Let's say 8 a.m. to 8.30 is going to be our morning meeting. Then in the collapsible section, I can describe what a morning meeting is. So this would be your description of a morning meeting. <laughs> and I'm just using that as an example. And let's go ahead and duplicate this. Then let's say from 8.30 to 9.30, we have math. And this would be your description of math instruction. Okay, you get the point. So now let's go ahead to preview. Let's go back to our homepage, just kind of test this. If I click on view our schedule, it takes me to this page. And now I can click here and it will show my description of a morning meeting or it will show my description of math instruction. So you can actually add your whole schedule in just like that. Let's go ahead and exit out of there. Now let's go back to the homepage. I need to add in e-learning, but I have e-learning expectations, online resources, e-learning help. I feel like those all kind of go together. So I might make a page that is just e-learning or distance learning or online learning, whatever you're calling it, hit done. Okay, now let's add several subheadings or sub pages. So let's have expectations, online resources, and let's have help. So now I have three different sub pages. So if I go back to my homepage, this expectations one, I'm gonna link it directly to the expectations page. I don't want it to go to the main e-learning tab. I just want it to go to expectations. I just want online resources to go to online resources and I want the help to go directly to the help page. But maybe parents wanna look at all of the e-learning resources, they could actually go here and I could link to other things besides just those. So maybe on my online resources page, let's go ahead and again delete this, I might want to insert in some videos from YouTube. So I could type in Google Classroom for Beginners. It's gonna pull up videos. Oh, let's use this video right here and select that. <laughs> and it will insert in that YouTube video directly to that page. I could also add in a form. Maybe I want parents to be able to insert in questions that they have. So I could select a form, like I'm just gonna use this blank quiz. Let's pretend that it was you know, a form that I had. Let's go ahead and insert that in. And maybe this is like a place for them to submit questions. So I can actually add that right on the page if I want to, I can resize it and have it be bigger. Cool, looking pretty good. Maybe I've created a Google Doc with all of these like helpful resources. I can add in a Google Doc. What do I have in here? I don't even know. Oh, I have some podcast outlines for Bridget Nice Podcast and some papers. Okay, we'll just use this podcast one as an example. Okay, so 
I can actually insert that Google Doc right in there. Again, I can resize it to take up as much space as I want. And I can also reorder these sections. So let's say I want this to be under my video. I'm just going to click and drag so it is underneath. And now it is underneath of my video. You can totally customize this to work for however you want it. Let's go back to the homepage because I just want to show you all some different features. Obviously, I'm not going to build the whole website right now because we would be here for 10 million years. Um, under the help page, I would probably use that collapsible text again. So I might add in collapsible text for like commonly asked questions. So like how do I get to Google Classroom? And then I can put the answer right here. So I would answer the question here. And that way, when people are using the website, so I'm just gonna go to preview, it just has a list of those commonly asked questions and they can just click in order to view the answer. I feel like that's a really good option for a help page. Now let me create my contact page because I wanna show you something really, really cool. I'm gonna go ahead and add a new page and I'm going to call it contact. Okay, let's drag this down to the bottom because I want it to be last. Oh, I made it a sub page. All right, drag it out, there we go. Let's go ahead and delete this. Maybe on the contact page, I want something that parents can just click and email me right away. So I'm gonna come to insert, I'm gonna choose button, and I'm gonna have this say, email me. Under the link, I can actually type in like a URL, but in this case, if I want it to go directly to my email, I'm gonna type in mail to colon, no spaces. So it's just mail to colon. Again, no spaces, I'm gonna type in my email address, pocketfullofprimary at gmail.com, and I'm going to click insert. So with this button, I can resize it, have it be nice and big. Let's go ahead and put it in like the center. So I now have this button and it is linked so that when they click on it, it will automatically open up to bring an email to me. So let me show you what this looks like. First of all, let's go back to our homepage and let's link this contact information to the contact page, click apply, and let's preview this. So I'm on my homepage, I scroll down, oh, I need to contact them, let me click contact. Oh, email me, click. It's going to open up their email and automatically have a compose box with it sending to your email. So I automatically had it sent to pocketfullprimary at gmail.com literally a game changer. It's so cool. I'm going to X out of there. I don't need that anymore. Let's say the first week of school, I want parents to fill out a form for me to help to get to know them and contact information and all that. Let's go ahead and X out of the preview. I'm going to add a button that will take them directly to a form to fill out. So let's go ahead and add in a button and let's have it say, fill out this form. Okay. So I wanted to go to a link. Let me go back to my drive. I have this Google form right here. I'm gonna open it up and I just made this quickly last night. It's not like my actual parent information form. I'm gonna go to send and I'm going to get that link. I'm gonna go ahead and copy that link and I'm gonna come back to my Google site and I'm going to paste that link right there and click insert. Now I need to move this up so I have it at the top of my page, which I can always delete this later when the form you know, has all been filled out and I don't need them to do it anymore. Let's go ahead and make this bigger so it gets their attention. And let's, let's alter this section maybe. I want to go to section background and let's choose emphasis two. That's gonna make it black and now the button is white and I feel like it sticks out a lot more. Let's center it, okay, and let's preview this. So now, when you come to my homepage, I have this button right here, it's getting their attention, and if I wanted to make it another color, like let's say green to really get their attention, you have the option to add an image. So I could just take like a PowerPoint slide, make it green, save it as an image, and import that. If I click fill out this form, it automatically takes them to the Google form. Hopefully this gave you some inspiration for creating your own Google site, as you can see, you can make it as complicated or simple as you want. A lot of the things I showed you in this video were kind of extra, right? Like creating those images and inserting it in. You don't have to do that. You can make it very basic and just use what Google Sites has available to you with the text boxes and the images. But you can also go fully, you know, fancy and you can create your own images on PowerPoint, upload them and really make it your own. 
I just wanted this video to kind of show you the basics of creating your own Google site. I would love to hear how you all are using Google Sites with your students this year or with your families. Leave a comment down below. If there's something specific in this video that you want me to go over in more detail or another aspect of Google Sites that you want me to cover, again, leave a comment, let me know. But if this video was helpful, please give it a thumbs up, share it out with your teacher friends, okay? Any teacher friends who might be you know, creating a class website this year, send them this video and be like, hey, this is what you need to do. Also, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. As always, thank you for watching. I love you all so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I'll catch you in the next one.